Hey there, it's Jorik. Today I want to show you how to securely create keys for Ethereum 2. I've mentioned this a couple times in other videos, like uh, using a live CD, booting from it, using deposit CLI, everything's gone after, etc. Yada, yada. Um, if that is enough and you already know what to do, then you're done. Otherwise, I'm going to try and show this to you. It's uh, going to be a little interesting. We're going to do this uh, in a very live way. I'm going to download Ubuntu, put it on a USB stick, boot from it, and hope I can record on the other side. All right, let's get going. Uh, I'll learn how to fast forward too. Yay. Download Ubuntu Desktop because it's easy. That's really the only reason. There it is. <clears throat> then we're going to grab Rufus to um, write this. The instructions for this, by the way, are over here. Create bootable USB stick on Windows on the Ubuntu.com site. So we want Rufus. All right, install that. And it's going to go onto this thing right here. <clears throat> All right, I'll be back just as soon as my Ubuntu is downloaded. All right, <clears throat> Ubuntu downloaded OK. I just hit this select button here, grabbed my Ubuntu AMD ISO. Everything else can stay the way it is. Um, and I want it on this uh, stick I have here, right? So I'm going to just start that. Um, new versions of SysLinux, do you want to download? In this particular case, yes, I do. And right in ISO image mode is the right option here and all data will be destroyed, which I am okay with. Okay, I'll be back when this is done. All right, so while that's getting ready, I've uh, prepared myself a second USB stick um, that I will use to transfer the files off, so, or the, the keys off. So when this uh, live CD here ex explains how this works. Everything in a live CD or live USB, same difference, um, is gone after you shut the machine down. So for permanence, I'm just going to use a USB stick and mount that in Linux so I can um, I can take the keys, the keys to M files and, the, and then the deposit file and put that on here and then I can move it off from there. So the writing is done. I will reboot on this. Uh, your UEFI BIOS will determine how this works. There's usually a boot menu that allows you to choose what you're booting from. So you want to boot from this USB stick. Uh, that will be a read-only file system. You will, however, be able to um, install applications as usual. I got myself this uh, little link here, or this little text file that has a couple useful links, including where to find F20 Deposit CLI that I will mount and then write everything to. All right, I'll be back. All right, here I am in Ubuntu using a vocal screen. Hopefully this works to record. Um, I just chose to boot Ubuntu and then instead of uh, install Ubuntu, try Ubuntu. It will automatically um, mount the USB drive I had. So here it is with the F20 deposit link. And I am going to um, use F20 deposit CLI to create a mnemonic and uh, <coughs> and create keys. right? and do all this securely. So there's a couple things I need to do here. First, I need to grab this, and then I need to disconnect my machine from the internet entirely. And then create keys and shut down. OK, fine. Um, we're looking for installation, binary files. That's one way to do it. Why not? Let's see what we got. Linux, AMD64, that's what we're doing. Open that with Archive Manager, why not? Okay, and there I have a deposit file, so I'm just going to grab that and stick that into my home directory here. Okay, I should now be able to go down here to show applications. 
find myself a terminal and say dot slash deposit. And that's working. So deposit new mnemonic. But before I go any further, <clears throat> I need to disconnect this machine from the internet. So Intel Ethernet connected, turn off. All right, I have no connection. Verify that. Ping 8888. Nope, network unreachable. All right, perfect. So I am completely offline. Dot slash deposit, new mnemonic. I'm obviously not actually going to use this, so I'm chill showing it to you, right? And I'm going to make this a little bigger. English is my language. I wish to run how many ever validators you want, right? Um, let's say one. I should also say if you are um, if you already have a mnemonic, you can run this with existing mnemonic, and then it will prompt you for your index. That's how many validators you already have. So say you have one, index is one, and you want an additional one, then one additional. So index one and one additional. All right, mainnet, sure. Type the password that secures your valid data key stores. So that's the one for the key store dash m files. Okay, and now it wants me to write down my mnemonic, uh, which I shall do. And um, I'm probably going to fast forward through all this when you see it. I'd mentioned this in other videos and just want to mention it here once more. Um, so this mnemonic you see here, this should never be online anywhere. Don't store that online. Don't copy, don't paste, don't put it into a key store. It needs to be offline. So I'm going to start with just writing it on a piece of paper, right? Um, obviously, since I'm recording this, this mnemonic here, I will not use it at all. Um, once I'm done recording this, all this gets thrown away, right? So let's go here. Uh, the 24 uh, word mnemonic is your seed phrase. Uh, this creates the seed from which the withdrawal key is created and the signing keys. Signing keys are your validator keys. Now that I've written this down, I can press a key and it will ask me for it again. And I clearly had that right, so it's creating my keys, my key stores, and verifies the deposits. So now this is in home Ubuntu validator keys. There it is. So I'm going to grab this entire validator keys directory and I'm going to copy it over here into my USB drive. And what's in here is a deposit data JSON and a key store M. The deposit data, this is all public data. So you see here the pub key, the withdrawal credentials, the amount 32F and the signature. This is what you use in launchpad.ethereum.org. And this key store M file here, this is the signing key. And uh, that's encrypted with the um, password or passphrase you set for it when you created this, right? Now there's one more thing I can do if I so desire. I can verify one more time that I had this right, um, that I have the, the um, seed phrase, the mnemonic written down correctly. Since without the seed phrase, I cannot withdraw, that seems important. So I can do deposit existing mnemonic. And it's going to ask me for my mnemonic. And now it's going to say, um, what's your index number here, right? 
so if I were actually to generate more keys, my index number now would be one because I had uh, one key generated. But in this case, I just want to re regenerate the key. So what I'm doing is I'm regenerating it and I'm going to verify that the pop key matches. So zero and one and it's mainnet again. And uh, once more, a password for the validator key store. Okay, so now what I can do I'm in the wrong spot. I need to go here, validator keys. What you see here is it did this all over again, right? It created a new um, key store M with a different timestamp. So that's the first one, that's the second one. So I'm gonna open both of these. And I'm going to verify that the pop key matches. So what I expect to see here is a different salt and thus a different um, different actual encrypted piece of data. And that's the case here. You see my AV is different and this encrypted piece of data here is different. But the pop key should be the same. So it starts with B80389. There we are, and ends in 80EB8AD, 80EB8AD, right? So I have my um, seed phrase correct, and I have verified that I can recreate this key store M if I need to. All right, great. That's all she wrote. Um, since I have my original files on here in validator keys, I can now shut down this machine at which point everything I created is gone with the exception of what I put onto the USB drive. And I am back on Windows on the same machine. Uh, side note, because of the way that Linux handles the system clock, the hardware clock, you'll want to come in here and do a date and time settings and then uh, sync now after you boot back into Windows because otherwise this will be set to UTC time, right? That's the default Linux behavior that the hardware clock is set to UTC, whereas the default Windows behavior is that the hardware clock is set to your time zone. Okay, that having been said, here's my Ubuntu. Um, just want to show you that everything is gone. You see there's no home directory here and if I search say for validator, Remember that was the name of the directory. There's nothing here, right? This USB drive has my validator keys directory that I copied here with the deposit data JSON. This I would now use in Launchpad, deposit my 32F. And um, after that, the deposit data JSON should be deleted. So you're not um, double depositing. And then the key store M, you wanna keep safe. This is an encrypted file already. So you can just leave it on a USB, maybe with a backup somewhere. Um, you also want to record the password for this. Um, if you watched previous vi videos, I like KeePass with a password database on a USB drive or on like a DVD or something, right, um, where it can be gotten to. Okay, that was really everything about securely creating keys for Ethereum 2 on a completely offline machine so that there is no um, danger of compromise. Thank you.